Welcome to Mondays on Main, everybody. How you doing? Thanks for stopping by. I'm your co-host, Sean David, and this is... Stephanie Susie. <laughs> <laughs> she woke up right I there. Did, she I did, I did. <laughs> and uh, yeah, Mondays on Main. What's Mondays on Main? Uh, we just kind of talk to other creatives within Southern Illinois. Um, talk about being creatives and talking about uh, owning creative small businesses and small sure. business in general. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> also, you may have noticed someone else at the table. <laughs> I'm Caitlin Wallace Rowland. Um, I'm a local artist and a uh, small business owner, I guess. My mm-hmm. own my own namesake business. Um, and I'm here to chat about what they just talked about, about creative business and running a creative business and that kind of community connection and yeah, all those things in Harrisburg, Saline County, this area. All that good stuff. Right on. Yeah. Well, can you tell us a little bit about like what your business is? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, So I'm a painter and textile designer. So um, I guess like a little tiny bit of backstory about me. Um, I'm from Harrisburg um, and then I lived in New Orleans for 12 years. Um, That's where I went to college. And um, I studied studio art and then I went to grad school for textile design. And so I work with a company called Dear Stella Fabrics um, that produces my um, hand-painted designs that I've put into repeat. They produce them on fabric um, and I work with some other um, like licensing businesses um, that print those things onto other products. So I've had some things in like home goods stores and target stores and um, different things like that. But I really love pattern and color and like hand-painted designs. I do a lot of florals, um, that kind of stuff. Um, I also do like fine art, like original paintings, um, and sell those and do prints and some other products. And, um, I'm an adjunct art instructor at SIC. Um, I took over all a dra- of the art. Yeah, I know all of the art. I took over <laughs> drawing last semester and then I'm teaching painting this semester. So yeah, I just have a diverse art background, um, in all kinds of arts. Um, my mom was a seamstress. I grew up sewing. That was kind of where my love of fabric came from. Um, and then, yeah, painting, visual arts. Yeah. I love supporting all the arts. Um, I feel like art lines, licensing is really having a, yeah. a moment right now. Because I've been seeing, either I've been searching for it and it's just showing up in my feed or it's just been showing up a lot. Yeah. I've been noticing that it has been, has that been I mean, licensing on your side? Yeah, I mean, that that seems to be true, I would say. I feel like it's hard for me to say because like my life is so wrapped up in that that yeah. I'm like paying attention to it all the time. Yeah, so as yeah, far yeah. as like other yeah. people paying attention to it, I'm not sure. Um, but it does seem to be like more of a thing. Like I feel yeah. like anytime I say something, like when people ask me what, we do, what I do and I say I'm a fabric designer, people are like, what? Yeah. And like, <clears throat> that's something I think that just like people haven't thought about before. Yeah. And I think maybe it's on more yeah. people's radar that yeah. like that's something they can do. Um, I think especially because of the like flexibility that that yeah. can provide. Like I can work, I can work from anywhere. Like yeah, I have yeah, location yeah. flexibility because I'm licensing that stuff to companies. Yeah. And so I guess for anybody that doesn't know exactly what licensing is, like I'm creating that artwork and then I'm working with companies and I'm sending them the digital files and then they're doing all the manufacturing and all that kind of stuff. So that's not something I have to worry about. I don't have yeah. to worry about keeping inventory in stock and yeah. trying to like market and sell all that yeah. stuff myself. Yeah. <clears throat> um, they do that for me, which is really great. But then, yeah. I mean, I only make money off of the like royalties of it, or sometimes um, it's like a flat fee at the beginning. So yeah. it's not a like get rich yeah. quick scheme. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a get rich yeah. at all. Yeah. It's like a, I, I like do all right. But Supplemental income. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Kind of and it like is. it takes a long time to build up. Like yeah. over the years, like working with different clients, I have I have some things that like I get quarterly like payment checks from and stuff like that. But um, it's definitely. Um, That's something that I I feel like the art programs moving forward in the future, like with ArtsGo, I thought it was something that maybe we need to address. But art teachers, especially like higher level art teachers, like high school and college, they need to talk about the licensing side Mm -hmm. of it and how you can make a business built around just being a a licensed I mean, the business, in, the business part of like creativity in general, like yeah. I feel like, so like, I mean, I went to Tulane University for art and like they are a big school and like our, my studio art program was very like formal based. I mm-hmm. mean, it was very much like the only kind of, kind of like path that we were given sort of as artists was like, 
here's like, you can look for gallery representation and here's how you like kind of do that. And that that was even kind of minimal in the, like, how do you do that? It was just kind of like, that was the only thing that we were sort of shown. And I, I do like creating original work, but the gallery scene never really was like what I was that interested in doing. Like, um, but that's the other side of it that, you know, if that is the way that you want to go, there's, there's ways of which you get into that yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, the the contacts that you need to make and the portfolio that you need to create that's specifically for that like that's all part of it that I don't feel like that's something that you've really got to figure out as you move through yeah and there's not really a lot of opportunity out there for guidance oh when yeah it comes yeah. to that I wish there was a guidebook sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes I like yeah. tell my husband I'm like why didn't I become like a lawyer or a doctor? Or like the, <laughs> well, I mean, it was like, yeah, for the money. Yeah, but yeah. Um, there's just like such a clear path yeah. to like getting there. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have yeah. to do like the residencies yeah. or the whatever, like, and, and like with being an artist. Um, and I mean, I'm not only creatives. Like, I mean, there's a lot of creatives yeah. that are like that, but like you're trying to forge this path that there is no like, yeah, there's, not there's no roadmap for yeah. it. Um, you're making it yourself. And yeah, that can be yeah really hard. It is really hard. It is very, very hard. And it takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. I know there are some people that um, the art, like these, they're younger kids and they think that, that the minute that they get out of school or they get out of college or whatever, that they're going to be able to hit the ground running yeah. and quit their day job. And it's like, no, that that's, you can't do that. It yeah. takes a while to build. It takes a while to build to where you're making enough money to pay your bills. Yeah. So it, you got to have a bill paying job while you're building your yeah, for art sure. career. And so it's a... Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. It's not even now. Like I, I had mentioned it before when I bought this building because this building was an undertaking, and it's like I'm this. I'm in. My, I'm entering my twentieth year as a photographer, and I'm just now to where I feel comfortable buying a building. So it's yeah. and it took me. It took me th- three years of having my business to be able to go full time with it. So it's not just something that yeah, yeah that's easy to access and. Not even if you were to have a mentor, just because you have a mentor doesn't mean that you necessarily have, they know the path that you're on. Yeah. For so sure. yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, I, no, I think that's great. Like I, um, I mean, I worked in graphic design for a long time. Uh-huh. Like, so I, so I, like in undergrad, I knew that I wanted to kind of, um, go into the fabric in the design world because like I said, I didn't, I wasn't super interested in the like gallery scene. Yeah. And I, I, I am really interested in the intersection of art and everyday life. Like I, I mean, I love paintings and I have tons of art in my house and I love having them on the walls and like that can definitely bring your mood up and create this home space that you like. Um, but what I like about licensing and design is that it can enter more of the everyday. Like yeah. I, my patterns are on clothes and on water bottles and on like all kinds of things that you interact with and touch on a, on a regular basis. And, um, like when I was at Tulane, like there wasn't like a program for that. Mm -hmm. And so, so definitely I was forging my own path, but I also had to like, um, like learn and do internships and stuff like that to like get into the design realm. And then I worked Mm -hmm. a graphic design job, Mm -hmm. Um, like in a church where I was making bulletins every week. Like it was, it was not super, I mean, it, it was somewhat sexy. creative, but yeah, yeah. It was not, not my dream job by any means. Um, I mean, I worked with lovely people and it was, yeah. it was a really great experience. Um, and it helped like my husband and I to like pay off his student yeah. loans and like get to the place where we were more financially yeah. able to do something. Mm-hmm. And like doing those kind of things first is the only reason that I've been able to like do this later yeah. because like we really made an effort early on to like get to a financial place where yeah. we had that flexibility. And I also want to uh, uh, like acknowledge that like, I also have a husband. So it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. us like working together and like yeah. paying our bills. Like yeah. it would be harder yeah. if it was just me on my own. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, like I worked in graphic design for like mm-hmm. a long time before I was able to then transition into fabric design. So it's definitely not a, not an overnight thing by any means. Mm-mm. No, by um, any stretch. Um, how would you like to pipe in on that, Mr. Videographer? <laughs> no, I mean, I'm enjoying the combo because yeah. I know I had my own, uh, struggles, if you will, starting out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for me, it, it was, it was a, an interest that became a passion that then I was like, how can I do this and make yeah. money, mm-hmm. but also still keep the passion. Yeah. And that's a, you know. Oh, that's a hard balance. <laughs> yeah, it really That's is. a hard balance. It's a whole other thing on, on, in and of itself. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, starting out, I totally agree. There's really nothing I could add to what you, I mean, yeah. 
hundred percent agree with you too. Yeah. It's just part of it though. Yeah. You know, unless you're super privileged and have parents yeah. or someone who's Yeah. You have a bankroll you behind and, you. Yeah, you know. But that's not realistic yeah. for But also <laughs> I think I want to acknowledge too that like even if you have that, or like you said, a mentor, yeah. like especially in the creative realm, like this takes talent and like cultivating yeah. like your creativity and like building that up. Yeah. And like you have to like there's no like fast pass to being like a good artist. Like yeah. you have to put the work in yeah. to like be able to do that. And like, you have to have the gumption to show up every yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, there's just, there's no, even if you have the money behind you, yeah. there's no fast pass yeah. to being a good That's artist. That's true. Like, you, That's true. There's some things that money can't buy and that yeah, is Yeah, yeah, Like the, you need the experience and the yeah. cultivating that talent. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. You gotta, you time. gotta, you gotta you be able to go after it every day. You have to be able to show up every day in some way. And that gets hard. That gets mm. real hard after a while. Yeah, and it's funny too to look back. Not that I'm where I want to be. Yeah, probably never will be. Yeah, but you grow over yeah. the years. Yeah, you know we yeah. all have pretty good amount of experience behind us at this point in yeah. our areas, and it's funny to look back and see how much has changed mm -hmm. in the growth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ten like, ten years ago, me would be so proud of where I am today. I know. I was thinking though, that like, too. Yeah. I'm like, if I would have told myself that this is where I would be when I was first starting out, I'd be like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. But now I'm like, Ugh, or would you have believed it? Yeah, that that probably would. I don't know. That would have been hard. I will say I've had this conversation with people before because I've had people tell me that. Sorry, this, I'm not saying this to be s narcissistic, but I've had people tell me you're a success. You're considered a success for this area, and I'm like, okay, but listen, success does not feel like what you think it's going uh, oh, to feel exactly, like. Oh, exactly, exactly. Because I, in my head every day, feel like I am on the struggle bus most of the time. And so when people, I need people to say that to me because I would really think that I'm like, like hot, which I am a hot mess express 90% of the time, but I got something behind me like that's, that's pushing me to do this stuff. But no, success does not feel like what you think yeah. it's going to feel like. So yeah. on the surface, people think that you're successful, but there's so much under the oh, yeah, yeah, under sure. the surface that that is going on that makes you feel like you are not successful. Yeah. I mean, I can speak to that for sure. Yeah. Like, I mean, I worked in Lily Pulitzer's headquarters yeah. and I had a water bottle with my designs on it and yeah, Target yeah, stores. Yeah, yeah. Like things that sound very like... Yeah how did you do that? That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And like, I feel like sometimes I have to remind myself that like, oh yeah, those are really cool things. But yeah. like you put the work in. So yeah. like, ex for example, like the target water bottle, like yeah. that was a design that I made years ago. Mm -hmm. I like signed the contracts and it didn't come out for like another year. So by the time it comes out, you're like, you're like in a different you're space. It. You're thinking yeah. about something yeah. else. <laughs> and like, just because those things have been successes doesn't automatically mean that they're monetary successes yeah, either. Like yeah. my fabric lines are some of the like most meaningful things that I've created. I'm so ex like a lot of people, especially like in New Orleans mm -hmm. with my Mardi Gras fabrics, people know me for those. And like you guys would laugh at how much money I've made from those. <laughs> like yeah. I could make more money working at McDonald's. Yeah. I, <laughs> um, listen, I understand But that. like uh, it's also been like a really like – looking back in my life, I hope yeah. that that's something I'm still really yeah. glad that I put the time yeah. and effort and yeah. energy into because yeah. I feel like it's made well, the world I, a more beautiful place. Yeah. I added something. And it's not always something. about the money. It's not always about the money. It sucks. Yeah. And I mean, the money pays your bills and it keeps the food on the table, but it's not always about the money. And sometimes yeah. it's about the experience or, you know, sometimes it is about getting your name out there and yeah. furthering it because you don't know where, you know, where that's going to take your name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And those, all those opportunities build yeah. upon themselves. And like, yeah. I have an art group that <laughs> we were talking about it the other day. I was like, I hope at some point all these opportunities that are building are actually going to lead yes. somewhere that's yes. like monetarily yes. successful. Yes. But yes. like you keep telling, that's like what, <laughs> what moves the lever a little bit more yeah. being like, okay, yeah. well, this is a good opportunity. Yeah, a good <laughs> like when are the opportunities going to like actually pay me back? Um, not but even if not, they don't, aren't you still going to do it? Yeah. yeah. Like to some extent. I mean, it's, it kind of sucky to say because yeah. it's like you want to be like to the point that like, especially like you're in your like 20th year, like I'm like pretty far in my journey too. It's like you want to be like, yeah. oh, pay me well for the time. Like yeah. I have the experience. Like I'm good at this. Like I've put a lot into it. Um, but it, some of it is just the reality of yeah. like where you're yep. getting. Um, yep. And yeah, that's unfortunate. It but. is. It is. Well, and especially we're in a rural area. Mm -hmm. I think that if yeah. we were, I think about this all the time. If I were in a more metropolitan area, it would be wildly different. Yeah. It would have been wildly different back in the day when I was shooting weddings. And, and so, yeah, I, I think if we were in a, di which I mean, you come from New Orleans, so you yeah. were in a little bit more of a metropolitan area. 
How different do you think it would be if you were still down there? Do you think you'd still be on the same path or do you think it would be different? How many way? homes would you own that were vacation homes? If you were <laughs> None. <laughs> None, for sure. Uh, oh, I mean, living in New Orleans, though, like it's kind of like life is a little bit of a vacation. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you know, that's interesting. Um, I do think a lot about like city versus country and like something that was something that I was like worried about, about finding like a community and like how life was going to look like moving back here. I knew that like financially we were going to be a little bit more free moving yeah. back to the country yeah. because it is less yeah. expensive yeah. to live in the For country. Sure. And like we have family around. And so like that cuts down some of our childcare costs and like different things like that. Um, but so as far as like creative opportunities in a city, there are so many more of those. Like there's more art festivals that you can be involved yeah. in or places yeah. to sell your work. Yeah. Um, things like that. Like there's galleries and shows going on, but there's also like so much more. I don't, I don't want to use the word comp competition necessarily because I feel like we're all kind of like in a different place, but there's also so many other artists like yeah. doing things. Yeah. And so like, yeah. it can be harder to stand out. Yeah. Um, and I feel like I didn't necessarily have that problem in New Orleans. I think because I sort of found this niche with like my Mardi Gras fabrics that there, there wasn't really people yeah. creating cool Mardi Gras. Like all of the Mardi Gras prints were like really, I don't know, not cool looking. <laughs> like I don't know how to describe them, but like not very exciting. And so I feel they like- They weren't I, yours. Yeah, exactly. Like um, <laughs> they, so I found a niche um, and I think that people really responded to that. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I was able to sort of create a name there and I lived there for 12 years. So like I had built up a pretty yeah. good community of yeah. like friends and people that wanted yeah. to support me. Um, but like being in a small town, I mean, like my hometown is really supportive of my work yeah, too. Yeah, like yeah. there's tons of people yeah. here, even yeah. when I lived in New Orleans, like tons of people that like from my hometown that were always, um, like buying my art mm -hmm. or like doing things like that. Mm -hmm. And like in a small area, you're able to stand out more because people I think are really excited or impressed to see that like you're doing things or mm -hmm. you're successful or you're like, they want to like see that growth. Like yeah. they want to see. I will, cool I will say that there are always going to be people that want to support you mm -hmm. that want to support, like genuinely they want to throw money at whatever, whatever you've got. So they yeah. want to be, they want to be super supportive. So I feel like you can find that wherever mm -hmm. you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's I think just that that circle gets people. a little bit bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I feel like, yeah, for sure. Like for me, um, like last year, I had a had a painting that was in um, SIU's Women's Voices Art Exhibit mm -hmm. um, at the Southern Illinois University Museum. And that was a cool opportunity um, because I got to meet, it was only women artists and they had to be from within uh, within an hour of yeah, SIU. Yeah. I'm and dropping mine off. Tomorrow. Yeah, I know, I know. You got into it this year. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really cool to meet other artists from the area. And like, I, I remember we had um, this like initial meet and greet, like kind of like luncheon thing. I know, they where had we it dropped last it weekend off. and I had to miss it. Oh, that's sad. Like, yeah. I, I remember walking in the room, but you've been around here longer. Like, I, I had just sort of, yeah. I guess that was like, we had been back a year and I'd yet to like really like find my place here exactly yeah. and so walking into the room and hearing all the cool things that people yeah. were doing i was like i found people i, will I found say, creative though, people yeah. that are doing cool things i will say though that i have been you know i've been a photographer for 20 years in this area and so my connections pretty much are within the photography yeah. community and i will say that getting going with arts go has really opened up a lot mm -hmm. of other creative avenues and other other creative people that I've gotten to meet over the over the last year and it's it's been nice. So yeah. in a way I, I feel what you're feeling because like I'm starting to get involved with all these other creative yeah, people yeah. and it is it's it's been really nice to get to know the whole creative community, not just yeah. the photographer, which I mean, I love my, my photographer community, but it, it's really nice yeah. to kind of get out there and meet other, other creatives. Yeah. That, and this, the, the ones that I met were like people doing ceramics and people yeah. doing weaving and fiber art yeah. and photography, painting. There yeah. were, there's like, um, like film yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, well, that's like, you know, when, when he and I started, uh, main street media, we started off strong with the 48 hour film festival mm -hmm. that they've got going yeah, yeah. with cinema click over in Murfreesboro. And that was a good experience of meeting others. So there's, there's a boom happening in yeah. Southern Illinois right now. I Well, and it, for me, it was kind of like you were saying, like I found people. Yeah. 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 Like when, yeah. When we did that, it's like, other people like me do exist. Yeah. Around yeah. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know that was the yeah. exact thing. Yeah. I was yeah. like sitting there going like, 
what yeah like where have you been been? exactly like you guys have done cool things you've been other places like what like they're one of the girls um i think she was a um (laughs) sorry I think she was a, uh, like, one of the instructors maybe at SIU uh-huh. in, like, the film department or something. Yeah. But, like, she had gone to Tulane mm-hmm. and, like, had lived in, like, Beirut or, like, somewhere in the, like, Middle yeah. East and, like, had done all this, like, film stuff. Um, there there was a girl that was, like, I think, I don't know, maybe grew up, I don't know, in some other country. Like, just people yeah. from all over the place, I think, was hard, was a big deal for me, too, because after leaving for a long time and just being around other people from, like, different walks of life and religions and cultures and all that kind of stuff like that was one thing I was worried about like in moving back that like everybody was going to just like think one way or like only have like kind of this one life experience Mm -hmm. and so also to see like people being creative but also like having all of these other experiences that they're bringing in was really helpful to me too I was like oh yeah there's there's people doing cool things it's inspiring on on a lot on across a lot a lot of levels it's it's very inspiring this might be a good chance to segue into arts co yeah I saw you painting something over here (laughs) So uh, we started Arts Go July of 22 officially was when we started it. And um, it was just kind of slow and it was just kind of a couple of meetings. We didn't really do anything. And then after the holiday, so as soon we kicked it off in like January, February of 2023. And then we brought Kelly on and then we brought Bob and Donna on and then you on. And um, we started rolling with classes i think you're well we had a poetry our poetry yeah. our poetry thing thing last was like february february and was it in was new orleans for mardi gras yeah that happened. so it was the first it was the first time that uh, the first booking and then your your painting my class, class. Was at, my painting class was in march, march. Of last year yeah so we were trying to just at least do w- something once a month and so we had a full year of learning experiences mm-hmm. last year um I'm, but i'm proud of all the things oh, we did in our first year we've done it. like a lot of really yeah. cool things i am super proud of what we have done and where we're going and like i said success doesn't feel like what you oh, think yeah. that it's going to feel like so it's a lot like like yeah, yeah, treading yeah. water like yeah. Out stream. yeah sometimes it felt like i was i was just barely keeping my eyeballs above water <laughs> especially between like October to December, it gets a little nutty, but, um, yeah, no, we're, and uh, yeah, I'm super proud with where we're going with it. And I don't know. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I am too. Um, I guess we should maybe like talk a little bit more about like what arts code does, um, for you guys anybody that's listening that doesn't, <laughs> doesn't know um well we're so st- our, we are still figuring out yeah what yeah but does. our mission is to support the art i was gonna paint on the other side oh i thought you were gonna do that okay, okay sorry. i'm gonna do that last <laughs> um i've been waiting for it to dry oh, okay. um anyway um our mission is supporting the arts in saline county and the surrounding mm-hmm. areas so um, just trying to add to those like creative opportunities so that like you don't mm-hmm. have to go to Carbondale or Paducah mm-hmm. or somewhere else to yeah. like meet, meet the people that are doing cool things. I mean, because that's, that's what it is, is if you want to go to like a painting class or anything like that, you've got to go to Carbondale, Paducah or Evansville, which are all an yeah. hour away. Yeah, yeah. Nothing and, is and maybe that's easy. fine on like a weekend when yeah. you have nothing to do, but like yeah. on a regular basis yeah. to meet on yeah. like a weeknight to yeah. like get together to do something. It's not. Yeah. Um, and so we've offered... So like, la- yeah, last March I did a painting class. It was mm-hmm. like a landscape painting mm-hmm. class. Mm-hmm. Um, we've been doing, I guess I would call them workshops, kind of like yeah. three, four hour workshops yeah. where um, like a local artist, um, I did one, Rebecca Mueller Williams did mm-hmm. one. Um, so far that's, I think that's the only two actual painting classes that we've had, which yeah. that is kind of in my head, my goal that we need to get more of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think year. people really, um, so, so, so both doing stuff, I feel like we're, we haven't yet, we're kind of getting to the place where we're yeah. supposed we're, we're going to be supporting more artists, yeah. like maybe have yeah. an open studio nights yes. and stuff like that. Yes. Um, well, but now that of- the building is underway and so we have like a legitimate space that is yeah. ours to use. I feel like a lot of what we did last year was offering art opportunities to the community. Yeah. Um, but we had to host them in other venues because we didn't have a space. But now our space is mostly ready yeah. <laughs> so we can um, start having like the small group meetings where it's like our poets we have a poetry group where that whitney jones leads off and she she's got ideas for how <laughs> projects and just fun things to do with the poets and ideally we would like to 
have more of those within like different, like I really would like to start a photographer group. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about having open studios here at the building so that we can just welcome whoever wants to come and work on things at the same time. Like if you've got a sketchbook or, or a painting or uh, sewing or knitting yeah. or any, anything, if you just want to come up here and hang out and work and be with other creative people, that's, that's our goal is to try to get the, yeah. so that everything we do doesn't have to require instruction from an artist yeah. or something, but like yeah. is a space where people can get yeah. together and just yeah. celebrate creativity, yes. like, like make things, yeah. do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's going to be probably our plan this year is to get more of that type of stuff. Yeah. Last year was, last year was a lot about brand recognition and getting people to know who we were and, and, and testing out ideas to see what yeah, people yeah, were yeah. interested in coming yeah. to, yeah. um, what, what things we could do for adults, what things we could do for kids. Yeah. Um, what time of year is successful yeah. and what time of year is not successful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's super busy? Um. Well, my wife and I just came to the last poetry reading uh -huh. at uh, Steam. And that did you was, have a good time? I did. Yeah. Honestly, I felt like it was too short. Uh, yeah. Like I wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I feel like with the poetry, uh, that's one that needs to be, it needs consistency. And so we need once a month, like, like we've, we've, it's the second Thursday of the month of every month, um, that we're doing a poetry reading at steam. And so all are welcome to come and read your poetry. And I mean, you don't necessarily have to read your own original poetry. That's kind of what we prefer, but like we had um, a mom come who her son is deployed somewhere. I don't remember where, but he is a poet and he sends her the poems that he writes. That's and then cool. she, I know, I thought that was super cool. She brought them and she read them and it, it was cool. I really liked it. You know, she wasn't reading her own original, but it was still original. Yeah. Well, and she got a little emotional. She got because, emotional because one of them was about you know. her. So, I mean, that brought And then it. she felt like apologetic and I'm like, no. No, if, that's if what If anything, like that's... That's, that's the poetry. Yeah, that is what yeah. we're here for. And that's what we want. We want the connection and yeah. to like hear people's stories and like why art is important to them yes. and yes. how yes. it resonates. Yes. And it's just mostly about just having that outlet and being with the other people. I feel like that's important just to make it happen, just to make it happen and to just to be in that environment with other people that are somewhat like-minded. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because yeah, then, you know, towards the, like, when the poetry part's done, it was kind of like, just hang out for a minute. Yeah. Chat with people who yeah. you might not ever really chat with before. Well, yeah. I think, I, I also feel like next time, February, because um, it's B-Y-O-W, wink, wink. Um, Does that mean writing? Water? Wine. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> what? I was like, what does the W stand for? <laughs> But um, there's a water. Most people say BYOB. I know that's weird, like, though. I know, people but like, don't. People don't bring. I think that stands for booze. Like I think you can bring booze? Any, anything you want. Oh, okay. All right. BYOB or BYOW. I think people take that to mean whatever. Okay. Or BYOW. Bring your own <laughs> no. whatever. Yeah, exactly. Bring your own whatever. <laughs> bring your own water. But Jade is going to offer like charcuterie boards and stuff like that for people to buy so that you can bring your own wine, but then also have like a, the little snackies. I would like a little bit more time of like just chilling and talking. Like the music is playing and we're all just kind of chilling and talking. So I feel like maybe if it's it starts at six o'clock and then... Um, we actually don't kick it off and get starting started until like 6.15 or 6.30. I then, love that you guys are talking about like the talking and stuff because I feel like that's something we've realized with Arsco that like this, there, this, there are definitely people around here that are creative that want a way yes. to, to like connect with other creatives. Yes. But there are also a lot of people that just want to support the arts yep. and like yep. they want to hear poetry or like yep. learn to paint or they just want a, like a place to connect with other people. Yes. And I think that that's yes. like the some of the strongest things that we're doing is like yeah. I feel like sometimes in a small town, it can feel like there's nothing to yeah. do or there's nowhere to yes. go or like you want to meet up with people, but like, where are you going to do that? Yeah. At? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, I the feel connection like we're providing that, that like that's you said, a, like connecting with people that you might not have like yeah. met up with before. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's, you obviously are there for some similar yeah. you yeah. know, things. So. I had at one of our first inner circle meetings that we had, one of the girls said she was a photographer, but she, you know, she wasn't a professional photographer. She was just a, a, a amateur hobbyist. But um, she wanted to just 
be around other mm-hmm. like-minded photographers. Yeah. And that's all she wanted. She, you know, it wasn't anything about paying money to shoot or bringing your gear or anything like that. It was just, just to get together and talk about things. And so that's one of my goals is to get a photography group started yeah. this year too, so that I can, cause I do like what the poetry is bringing to the table and I want more of that. Mm-hmm. I want way more of that. And so we've actually, um, had the discussion about Brooke's brother and sister-in-law are theatrical people. And so we've talked about mm-hmm. maybe having a cinema film Ooh, group fun. within, within arts go. I mean, I think that's great. I mean, there's a lot of, um, like Harris, I don't know about like the whole Sling County, but Harrisburg in particular has an amazing theater program. And like, yeah. I was involved in all that stuff yeah. in high school. Yeah. And like, yeah. I know they do a lot at, at teaching at SIC. Like mm-hmm. I'm in the arts building and I see there's so many people there in mm-hmm. involved in those kind oh, of yeah. things. I feel like this is a great area for theater yeah. production. And I would love to see arts yeah, yeah, be yeah. more involved yeah. in that. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Sean and I are also somewhat dedicated to getting something to happen at our city hall auditorium oh, because that's so it beautiful is beautiful in there. it is such a beautiful auditorium and so we're determined to well, make and they don't use it they don't use it for yeah, anything and Which, they there's it's not handicapped accessible so I well think it's a, not yet but they are, are they working gonna, they yeah, are getting awesome. one of those chair lifts so oh, it's not okay. ideal but they are working on getting one of those chair lifts that goes all the way up but it's it is a beautiful auditorium and yeah, it is unfortunate it be- that it is not used, used more than what it is. So that's one of our things is we would like to get um, Arts Go a theater and film group going and maybe we just have, I don't know, showings or something like that. Yeah. Secretly, I really am selfishly wanting a Rocky Horror Picture Show <laughs> in October <laughs> is really what I would like to see, but I don't know if that will be allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know either. I mean, you could always just put, you know, rated R. Yeah. Adults only. So. Don't bring your kids. Bring your kid if you want, but. Yeah. Bring your kid if you want. <laughs> <laughs> You've been warned. What is the acronym for that? Not bring your own. Yeah. BYOB. Like, don't bring your own kid. Keep your kid at home. <laughs> Get <laughs> a kids. babysitter. Hide yeah. Hide your kids. <laughs> So yeah, arts go. That's that's what we're doing. Look at you go. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so we are uh, test as as we're working on these. I guess we should say what we're doing. So arts go is getting ready to mm-hmm. have um, um, arts go is getting ready to have a um, Mardi Gras mask making mm-hmm. or not mask making door hanger door hanger mm-hmm. workshop. So yeah, we um, are kind of testing out. Yeah decorating those um and we were not i i will take ownership of it i was not together today and i was running behind and i didn't get the undercoat of painting on them so they are are still wet that's a good purple though i couldn't this was the darkest purple that walmart had like a i like this color purple too i want like some yeah well and this is a metallic gold because i bought yellow but i wanted i want that metallic gold so I've never had this before. So anyway, we're working on our samples for our Mardi Gras door hanger class that we're doing. Which you can join us on yes. February 3rd. Please do. I was about to say, so is this like a, uh, just for kids? Is it for adults? No, this, this, is, adults. this is for adults. This and I guess adults. this is kind of like meeting those needs of like, I feel like there's people in the community that are not necessarily like, you might not want to take a like fine art painting class. Like maybe you're not like super creative in that sense, but um, something fun to do to like celebrate the season. Um, And so I obviously have a passion for Mardi Gras being from New Orleans. Um, But I think the joy and celebration of that time um, can be, can be brought anywhere. And um, knowing how dark or not dark, but like, kind of dreary the winter is yes. um here is the like this is sparkles adding, and glitter yeah, of mardi is gras adding, is like adding some joy yeah. um so that's kind of why we're doing it um but it's sort of like a, a more crafty project for anybody yeah. who wants to do it um but it's not in like fine art class yeah you don't have to have any pre education or yeah. anything like that you can just come in and join us and have and fun and we'll tell play you with sparkles and glitter yes and we'll tell you everything you got to do and we'll provide all of the stuff for it and eat king cake i'm i'm yes. on stuff about the king cake yes we are going to have king cake um 
even if that, I mean, it's purely selfish on Caitlin and my, um, my, 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 I can't even eat it. But I just think that you can't have a Mardi Gras celebration. I can. You can't at all. No, it's an allergy, not like a. Oh, it's like legit legit allergy. It's not just like a, who, I don't, I don't know who would choose to do that for fun. Oh, like, I, I mean, I think people. there are people that do, but that would be terrible, there especially are. in a small town where there's not very many gluten-free options. Yeah. Girl, preach it. Yeah. Well, I'm having them. I wonder if we could have her make a gluten-free option. It's okay. It's not that big of a deal. I'll ask her. I don't want to like uh, make everybody do it just for me because I, I know well, that I mean, there's not as many. gluten-free tastes most of the time it tastes the same. It's actually very surprising. Yeah. Yeah. Because like Brooke, she's... Uh, it's not an allergy per se for her, but she doesn't need it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It causes issues. And <laughs> <laughs> we've discovered a lot of things that are gluten free that yeah. you wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But on the other side way. of that, it sometimes the gluten free stru- stuff winds up having like a lot more like nasty chemicals in it, doesn't it? Is that a thing? I think that like some people like miss miss thing and i don't know what the word is but like yeah i kind of think that like oh just because it's gluten-free it's healthy but like there's i mean a lot of like gluten-free alternatives are made with like potatoes or corn so it's not necessarily that they're like they're not more healthy healthy. it's just like if you can't eat wheat it's a good um option but i do agree that like like you can make some like really good gluten-free alternatives and there are a lot of companies that for whatever reason make gross ones (laughs) Well, I, Jay and I are not gluten free, but um, as in like spaghetti, I really like the red lentil pastas oh, yeah. and stuff like that. So I prefer, I almost prefer that to regular like spaghetti noodles. Yeah. So some of it is there, it's good options, but yeah, yeah some of it's not necessarily healthier. I'm glad there's more. Anyway, that was, a, that was a sidetrack, but yeah, we're, a I, I'm still shooting for a king cake because it's a, Important mar- part of Mardi Gras yeah. celebration. So, oh, I think even I if it's ba- just for y'all to enjoy. Did you see the baby? No. I have a baby. King cake baby. Look, there's a little Nike baby. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty big king cake baby. Usually they're like half that yeah, size. Yeah, that's probably, it probably was not in a real king cake. I don't, I feel like that because of the way that he sits, because he's got a flat booty. I think he sat on something. Oh, yeah. I thought about gluing him to my door hanger. Though. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine is like, uh, <laughs> we might need to do this again <laughs> because I should have, oh, yeah. uh, pa- I should have painted on this before I put all the glitter on it. I am going um, to. And I, I definitely think we need bigger ones, but okay. this yeah. has still been a. This was our test run, so we're. It's a still nice festive. Uh, yeah, but it's, this is not. This getting is in not, the Mardi Gras mood. We're doing this for right now, but we're not going to be showing anybody these. <laughs> <laughs> or we might be like, don't do it this way. Yeah, no, we're, we're just here doing this right now. Okay, anyway, what else are we going to talk about? Yeah, um, I, I, before we like move on from Arctica stuff, I feel like I also want to say that we do stuff for kids too. So we do have Lots adult workshops kids. Um, yeah. and stuff like that. But I would say kids some, are. I wasn't are, here during the summer, but yeah. you guys ran like a four week long kids yeah. Camp for kids. Yeah. Um, Art camp. Art camp was wildly successful. Wildly successful. And um, we will be doing it again. And I want to, I really want to extend art camp. I want, I want the kids program to be really big. I ideally would like something to happen once a month, at least for the kids. But um, I physically, mentally, emotionally, I can't do it all. I can't teach all of the classes. So it comes down to finding people that are self-starters enough to be able to say, hey, I can teach this class. I'm going to do da-da-da-da-da and just have more people to jump in that are ready to like rock and roll with doing stuff. So, so if you're hearing this, yeah. So if you're, and you're creative, yeah. even if you're not like an artist yeah. or like a painter or something like that, like, which we are, I need to get on. We would the, love more people to more that people. want that want to volunteer, that want to help lead workshops, yes. that want to yes. Um, yes. I don't know, hang out with kids that are kids things. Um, yeah, we need. Which I need to get off. I I've just ever since the holidays, I do not have my ish together at all. Not one, not one single bit. I do not have it together. But um, we're going to have a big inner circle meeting 
February. Do you remember the date on that? February. Do we decide on one? Yeah. Oh, is it February the next 13th? next meeting. Yeah, February yeah, 13th. Yeah, February 13th. So it's on Mardi Gras Day. <laughs> on Mardi Gras. <laughs> yeah. We are going to have an inner circle meeting where we would like everybody to come and show up and let us know what you want to do and what you can be a part of and how you can help and... So is the inner, I mean, I, I know, I know the answer to this yeah, question, but yeah. <laughs> is the inner circle for anyone to come anyone. and join that meeting anyone. or anyone, anyone that wants to be a part of it and help in any capacity in whatever capacity you want to be in, come and join the inner circle because we have a group on Facebook where whenever we need help for anything, I'm going there and posting it there and saying, listen, we've got this scheduled on this day. We need people to show up for this, that, or the other. And that is also where we would like for the people to communicate with us about, Hey, I've got an idea for this. Can we do, can I talk to you about hosting this class? And yeah. you know, we don't expect everybody to volunteer all the time. If you're just coming to like help clean up or help run a bring program snacks. or something, bring snacks. Yeah. Like we're not expecting you to pay out of pocket for the stuff. Um, and we're also like the teachers, we're not expecting you to do everything for free either. So like our classes, we can, we can sell the tickets and we can pay Within a certain, you know, we can't, we're not like loaded. <laughs> but I think we, we've established in this conversation we, that there are yeah. no loaded artists. No, but we can definitely pay you if you have an idea for a class. And then we would take, you know, a little bit of money from the ticket sales to help us pay for stuff in the future. So yeah, we're wide open. I, I keep saying that we are literally throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. And I really mean that because we are wildly open to whatever anybody wants to do. Wildly. Yeah. Wildly. And I, I feel like as we're talking to about like the finances and stuff like that, um, we have registered as a non-for-profit. We are yes. waiting on our confirmation any stuff day, in the mail. Any day. Um, I am checking the mail and so every day. I know I've had some people say stuff to me about like, oh, well, why are, if you guys are non-for-profit, why are you charging for these events and stuff like that? That is just to cover like the cost of supplies and that kind of stuff. Um, well, not-for-profit doesn't mean free. Yeah. Not for profit just means that not one person is making. Yeah, none of us are being. We're all volunteering. We our are time. All Nobody is getting paid. So um, literally, everybody is is working together and volunteering. The money aspect comes back in and goes back out to as the community. other classes and yeah, or things like our art drive. Like we donated yes, art supplies our, to local art teachers, yeah, which was really, um, really an awesome. I don't know. I felt like it was a big deal last year and I really want to make a, a bigger deal about the art drive this year because that, um, I'll just talk about it. If most of you don't know, our, our art teachers at the grade school, middle school and high school level, uh, they're working with like a $300 budget per year. And that's like, I think, I think I heard that it was getting slashed. Like, maybe yeah, like Sarah. So year? that was last year. So Sarah actually told us that um, this year it's getting slashed in half, I think is what she said, didn't she? So can you imagine a hundred, a hundred and fifty dollars for like all of the middle school art classes? That's all she's got. And I spent more than that on just a few oil paints for myself for Christmas. I mean, I can't like art supplies are expensive. Art supplies are expensive. So, um, so last year, right before school started, we had an art drive for all of the county art teachers and, you know, it was the first year and we came up with it last minute. So it wasn't a hundred percent like it wasn't like broadcast as, as loudly as it should have been, but we still received a lot of good donations mm -hmm. from a lot of people. And so I think this year we're going to really start earlier with that and kind of spread it out a little bit more and hopefully get, get some more moolah. Well, not necessarily moolah. We were not raising money. We were raising supplies for the art teachers. <laughs> I don't know how much people can see like what we're doing. This is not necessarily a massive. Okay, I'm not film. showing mine because it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep working on this. Yeah, before the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before yeah. I mean, it's not bad. I just do think it needs to be bigger. Okay, I'll make a bigger one. Um, I'll make a bigger template. Pro tip: put your paint on before you put the glitter on. Yes. But 
It is nice and glittery. I, know, I saw you doing that. I'm like, what the hell is she doing? Well, I kind of was like, oh, like it's wet. Maybe I was going to be done because we were talking and then I don't know. As an artist, there's supplies in front of me. I can't stop painting. There's like, I'm just going to keep messing with so this. So this until, is therapeutic uh, is what you're saying. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah. Which is another class that uh, I'm hoping to host in April is an art meditation class. So I actually have talked to Emily about coming and doing a, like a yoga breathing exercise before we start with the art meditation. Down, I would be down with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm all about it. So I'm kind of Get excited for right, that. Yeah. But then it's going to have like vibey music and, and like low light and like candles and BYOW. <laughs> Bring your own water, y'all. <laughs> Bring your own water. Get your Stanley ready. <laughs> Yours looks like it has a black eye because you painted only one side purple. <laughs> it's green on the other side. I know. I know. Uh, if you haven't noticed, Caitlin and I are wildly different people. So it's comical to watch us work together because. Yeah. She's very organized and like has it together OCD, and very OCD and I'm a let's slap that ish on there and move on with our lives. <laughs> Which is kind of funny in these because I just sort of slap that on there yeah. and you're being more like deliberate. I know. Stuff. Which is kind of not what we do, but it is what it is. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to talk about? How long has it been? Oh, we're right at an hour. What I else feel do we like need we to say? we could get more nitty gritty into something. I, I mean, know. we could always get way more nitty gritty into stuff, but do we need to do that? I feel like we haven't heard enough from you. Yeah, Do yeah. Do you want to add more to this conversation? Well, I'm not really an artist in that way. You are. Plus, like, we wanted this to be... Yeah, this was about uh, you. ...arts code heavy. Yeah. Because should. So I don't need to be in this whole lot. I would the like guest. to hear... At what do you want to... Yeah, what do you want to talk about? Well, I don't... I mean, I don't know. I'm kind of interested in what y'all are doing. I think you guys are doing some cool stuff with video and photography and like yeah. Main Street Media and yeah. all the kind of things you're going on, like yeah. highlighting businesses. Yeah. Like what? what is your guys' goal in the future with like how you're supporting local business in the The interviewee world? has become the interviewer. Know, yeah, tell me. Well, the table's <laughs> tell turned. <laughs> um, so Main Street Media was birthed because Sean and I are getting old and wanting to get out of <laughs> weddings. And we were both uh, just tired. We were just tired of shooting. Our backs were aching and our feet were tired. And we were like tired of old. weddings. Yes. And it wasn't any, I know I, people are like, oh, did you have a bad wedding? No, I genuinely didn't. Um, just like takes up all your weekends. It does. It takes it. It was the weekend. And- so I had voiced to Jay that in, t- in the fall of 2019, I had said, hey, I think I'm about ready to start winding down with weddings. And, you know, he's my, he's the worry wart and I'm the one that throws caution to the wind and he <laughs> starts freaking out about money and you can't do that. I'm like, dude, I have a full schedule for 2020. It's not something that I can just pull the plug on and be done. I have to f- fill, fulfill all of the weddings. Well, in COVID happened and it, you know, the first six months of the year were just nothing. We had to push everything back. And then thankfully, I didn't have anybody that was originally scheduled in 2020 that had to reschedule to 2021. And so having that first six months off of the year was like a big sign that, yes, I'm done. I'm done. I needed this time off. I'm ready to be done. So I I finished 2020 with all of the weddings that I had. And then I actually only had one wedding booked in 22. No, I only had one wedding booked in 21. And it was like the most perfect wedding. It was the perfect people. It was the perfect vendors. Like it was a shorter day. Like every, all of the stars were aligning like, let's at go out that. With the bang. Well, no, all of the stars were aligning at that wedding to make me want to stay. Oh, interesting. And when I left that wedding, I turned to Holly, my assistant, and I said, everything was perfect today and I'm still done. Yeah. And that's, that's when I really knew that's that good. I was really done because like I said, it was, it was the perfect wedding. And it's to, always good to like yeah. end something on like such a high well, note. I, like it, it's like, yeah, it's well, not, I you still don't have, leave with like so much grief yeah. over well, like. Then I knew because else. in 2022, I had my last wedding of the year was 
um, the bride was one of a friend group where I've like shot all of the brides, you know, I know the whole group I've shot them all and it was in Florida. And so that was the way that it really was the way to end it. It was her wedding. I knew her wedding was the way to end it. And so it was, I don't know everything I had. I know whenever I'm doing something, if I have peace about it, I know it's the right thing to do. Follow your intuition. And and that it was everything lined up to be perfect. And it was just the right thing to do. So anyway, sorry, I, I just totally took over. I that. think that's an interesting, like, just insight into the creative process in general. Yeah. That, like, as a creative, like, your path is never, like, just no. a straight line. No. And I think that, like, it, it is something that, like, you grow as an artist. And, like, I feel like I related to, like, that kind of journey in yeah. my own journey as well. That, yeah. like, I have spent a lot of years, like, cultivating my, like, yeah. art style, my painting yeah. style. Yeah. Like, continuing to, like make pieces or to, to do whatever. And you get to the point where like, it just doesn't feel like you just want to keep doing that same thing. Yeah. Like this last year, I focused a lot on teaching. Like I've yeah. been teaching workshops. Yeah. I've been teaching SIC. I like yeah. taught um, ceramics at, an, at a summer camp over the summer. Um, you just like want to start sharing that, like what you've learned yeah. with others yeah. and like changing your business in a way well, I also it's not just about. I also feel like that is an answer to burnout too. Mm-hmm. Cause whenever you start to get and that was, you know, I had shot weddings for 10 years and I had really started, I could tell that the challenges that I was facing at all of these weddings, they weren't challenges anymore. Yeah. And And so there was a lot of mental within my own head that I'm like, this isn't like, it was getting repetitive. The challenges weren't exciting anymore. And, and so it was just kind of, it was just a winding down process and I I could feel it coming. I feel like I've done the same thing in art that it's been like, yeah. Uh, like I started oil painting like yeah. a couple years ago because it was like okay like I've sort of mastered acrylic and gouache yeah. and yeah. like all these things yeah. like I want to challenge myself to something yeah. new yeah. and like yeah. the same thing with teaching and doing yeah. exhibitions and stuff like that it's just like yeah. as, as creatives we're also like highly oh yeah like functioning we gotta, we gotta like, keep we gotta going. be doing yeah stuff. we gotta like, keep going it, it's not fun anymore no. when it's just and like that's why I, cranking I, out the same old thing there's a lot in the photography community of the photographers that are like you've got to specialize you've got to specialize well that's great number one if you're in a metropolitan area where you can make all of yeah, your money yeah. on one thing that's not realistic here number one number two you gotta plan for the end at the beginning. And so you have to have some kind of out whenever you're ready to get out. You've, you've got to have something else to go to. And so like, I still, I didn't shoot a lot of families or anything like that, but I shot, I had a good (laughs) amount of people. Just imagine you as like a crotchety old lady with like a little cane, like on the (laughs) camera, like still trying to shoot weddings. Oh my God. You gotta have have a way to wind it down. Oh my God. Yeah. You gotta have a way. It's like a lot of physical work. It is. Weddings are physical. Anyway. So I say all of that to say, yeah, it was time and I knew. And so Sean and I had had a conversation about it. Sorry. I took over that conversation and didn't let you say it's a big part of the story yeah because for a while we had talked about doing main street well at the beginning of 2020 i mean we didn't know it was main street february so it was right before covid happened we all got together and we're like all right we're gonna join forces and we're gonna hit weddings hard Mm -hmm. and so that was our intention for at the beginning of 2020 is we were gonna hit weddings hard together and Uh, offer packages together and then covid happened and that completely fell apart yeah and then we were like obviously everything yeah obviously everything fell apart but like yeah that and so it everything fell apart and that's when we were all like screw this (laughs) what else can we do you you for a while because we shot several weddings together over the years and for a while you were always like i gotta start getting out of weddings yeah i'm thinking oh (laughs) we work so good together i know i know i'm glad i got married like what 12 years ago 12 years ago what year did you get married 2012 so did we yeah. You got married in the spring though, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. June. Beginning June. June. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we got married in October of that same yeah. year. So yeah, we've been married the same. So, so <laughs> sorry y'all for all those like upcoming brides. She really is. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no. Find someone else. Find somebody else. <laughs> I will help you. I will even help you find somebody else, but it ain't Well, me. and as a videographer, it's hard working with yeah. a photographer you yeah. just meet. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Even if you have a conversation beforehand, on the phone or whatever. Or There's a, a chemistry call. that yeah. has to... And aligning can, like the style oh, that yeah. you work in. And yeah. all that kind of stuff. You can tell them until you're blue in the face, hey, 
just don't stand in the aisle the whole yeah. time. Yeah. Get your stuff and get out. Yeah. You can be there. Yeah. But don't, I don't want to film your ass the for whole time. 40 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it just freaking happens. Every time. Yeah. Well, I think it kind of comes down to, are they considerate or are they not considerate? Because that's... Well, that's Across, a whole other conversation. Well, yeah, anyway. that's a that's a conversation that you and I just need to <laughs> but, have as uh, being a photographer and videographer. So you, because I've were worked with some jerk. Bringing all of this back <laughs> to mainstream <laughs> media. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so to get out main, of yeah, 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 and yeah. and it became mainstream media because the building here we're is on, Main, on Street. Main Street. And I mean, really, that is just we were. So Sean and I had talked about well, we need to do this. We need to do this, and we literally had a meeting at my house one day, and both of us are like we're we were kind of low energy and we were like, Oh God, starting another new thing. Yeah, like from that's the ground from up. the ground up. And so we were both, when we left that meeting, we were both like, eh, let's just let we're it go. We're not doing it. We're not doing it. And then literally that evening I got an inquiry for a local business to go and photograph his, a branding session for his, his local business. And it was a, a fun, it was a fun gig. And, um, I was like, all right, I guess this is God kicking me in the ass, telling me that this <laughs> is, I feel like we, like you guys are both like, <laughs> gotta bleep this out. Y'all, this is for kids too. He can bleep it if he wants it's to. Okay. Um, I almost said a couple of words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I don't know. I just really did. I felt like that was a kick in the pants of, all right, this is what we need to do. And so I texted him and I said, yeah, I woke up to a text. It. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay, I mean, that's, I guess we're doing. That's how a lot of create, good creative projects yeah. start. F it, let's do it. And you know what? Maybe I, that should be y'all's like slogan. Yeah, like, like, F it, let's line. do it. I mean, really, that is that is <laughs> who we are because like most of my creative ventures have not been. I've always like lived by the if it's not a hell yes, it's a no. Yeah, yeah but no, I that, that I have to get into the f it let's just do it and see what happens. And if it fails, it fails. And like, that is the attitude that I had with buying this building because mm -hmm. I was scared out of my bonker mind buying this building. And cause that's a lot of overhead and a lot of responsibility and a lot of crap that had to be done. On but the tail end of on a the pandemic. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. And getting out of weddings and blah, 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 blah. But, um, I, I just had the screw it. Let's do it. Let's well, see what happens. Well, I feel happens. like we work best when Bankruptcy we just, be damned. It takes them like at least six months. It, it takes them like six months to foreclose on your house. So <laughs> <laughs> I can start an OnlyFans account in six months. <laughs> <laughs> Covering a wide range of topics a here, y'all. A wide range of topics. But, um, and this is no alcohol. We have not had one drink within no. all of this. But All water. Just my, yeah, just my just water. Just water. Um, but anyway, so that was our answer to just we were just like screw it let's do it and so literally there was like not a lot of thought going into the name we we're like okay what do we call it yeah and I, we we threw out a couple of names at each other and i'm like main street main street media main street productions blah 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 blah. and we just went with main street media and here we are yeah. and but like it's and then it just kind of it started just, and so it's kind of like what happened with arts go i just we just threw it together and put it out there and saw what happened and the things that organically unfold are the best, yeah. are the best things. And so I feel like that's what's happened with Main Street is. Yeah. I also love the like correlation of Main Street with like the small town yeah. attitude. Like yeah. those like Main Street like yeah. Yeah. avenues. The downtown like, Yeah, like the downtown area. area. Have the revival the of like yeah. small businesses, yeah. like that kind of stuff. And so that kind of is like the purpose of this is we're creatives so we want to talk to creative people and we want to talk about creative businesses and all of that but we also do kind of want to focus on small towns small businesses and and plug all of the people that we feel very strongly about their businesses and we want to see them succeed so Super yeah. excited that I was chosen as the first, <laughs> as the first one. Yeah, you are the first inaugural, the inaugural <laughs> artist yeah. on here. But um, like, I don't know. We've got idea. We got a, a running list of, you know, and not everybody is going to be like. We really want to talk to Emily, Miss Emily, the um, children's, the children's librarian, because she's we love her, yeah, she's and amazing. so we just want to talk to her and get her voice out there. But at the same time, she is a small business owner too because she does yoga. 
-hmm. She has a yoga business. So she, in a way, she is a, a small business owner of her, on her own. So, but like, we'll probably interview McPeak, the mayor, and talk do you, about Do you guys have a way that people can submit like uh, no, requests for small business? Email. Uh, our email is, what is our email? Main Street Media, S-I-L at gmail.com. Main, Main Street, Street Media Co. Co. I forget about we'll the We'll put co. that in the show notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe below. Or Sean, like, will, yeah, Sean Laurel. will put it up at the bottom. It'll run across the screen. But yeah. no, we're five year old's obsessed with YouTube and it's like recording like her own like little things. It's like, like and subscribe below. Oh, I'm serious. <laughs> lessons with Laurel. Click no, the bell oh, so you guys you get should notified. We should know, interview Laurel. She gets really shy in uh No, let's do areas, I, so I, I really feel like with Arts Go, Laurel needs to have have an art lesson with Laurel and it needs to be like a uh, an ongoing thing with with arts go is the yeah. art lessons with Laurel. I gotta pick her up at 2 30. We, okay, we well, can continue this conversation with the five year old. Well just ask her. I wanted to I wanted to come from her. So you just ask her yeah. if if she wants to do this and what classes she wants to teach. Oh she she probably would yeah. Okay. I wanna I wanna know what she has to say about it. Maybe she could do like a pinch pot or something out of like the air dry clay as her pottery. I don't yeah. know. We can talk about that later. She but sing a song, do a dance. She can help yeah. you. She can help you come up with your theme song. <gasps> yeah. <There> you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Now I'm envisioning Arts Go as having their own like version of this, and Laurel will be the theme song, theme song singer for that. Yeah. Yeah. She'll probably do a dance. Yeah. Okay. How do we feel? Feel like we're winding down? I feel yeah, like I feel this good. is a natural wind down. How do you feel? I feel good. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we hop off this thing, yeah. can you tell, uh, and we'll also put this in show notes yeah. on the screen, whatever, but where can people find you? Yeah. In Harrisburg. <laughs> <laughs> Always around. Yeah. Um, no, my um, website is CaitlinWallaceRoland.com. C-A-I-T-L-I-N-W-A-L-L-A-C-E-R-O-W-L-A-N-D. Yeah, we'll definitely put that <laughs> well, in Yeah, the, which is somewhere. a lot. Like anytime I'm at the doctor and they're like, can you confirm your name? And I'm like, da 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 And on Instagram, my Instagram handle is Kate Alexandria. C-A-I-T-A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-I-A. Also very long. <laughs> Um, should definitely probably simplify that. Um, awesome. but not going to, sorry. Um, yeah, you can find me there. Um, I post on Instagram, um, some of the stuff that I'm up to my website. Um, I don't know what else important to say. You get a good vibe on your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I don't know. I am like, it is winter and I'm kind of in this like, uh, oh, yeah. creative slump and I'm just like, I'm in a hibernation mode. I like, I hit it really hard in the summer. So like yeah. last summer I taught pottery, um, at a summer camp in North Carolina and then we set up our own pottery studio at home and I really hit ceramic so hard in the fall Yeah, and just like kind of burnt myself out. Yeah. And so like I, I, I am kind of like figuring out and, and I guess that was also kind of like we've talked about like how your business evolves like yeah. I've done textile design stuff and I've done fine art and I like have done teaching and I've done gallery shows and I've done ceramics and it's just kind of like there's a balance between those like finding those things that challenge you yeah. and you get excited about and also like not doing so many things that your head is exploding yeah. and you're like, what am I doing with my life? Yeah. And like, how do I focus? So I feel like this year is a lot of like, okay, yeah. let's like, like hone in and focus on like what yeah. I'm supposed to be spending my time doing. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, my Instagram is not as exciting right this second. Um, because but I'm so doing a lot a of teaching. I'm doing a lot of teaching, but you can check out stuff there. I have, um, stuff for sale on my website. If you want to buy a print or fine art mm -hmm. painting or, um, I have some tea towels and totes and cards and notebooks and stuff like that that I sell that have my designs on them. Um, so, yeah, you can find all those. I feel like before we wrap this up, we need, like, some kind of, like, random, like, silly something. Like like a blooper? Or, like, or like I don't know. I'm not terrible at things like this. Like, I hate those, like, two truths and a lie. But, like, something like, what's, what's your favorite food? Or what's, what's your, your favorite? favorite cleaning supply? Oh. <laughs> Ask my husband. I'm not the best housekeeper. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, that I, is shocking. I well, so I am very much a like 
organized. Like I want things to be in their place yeah. and to be like, yeah. this is actually an interesting conversation because I feel like as a creative, like I am really into like home design and decor yeah. and the way a space stays, yeah. but it's kind of like a painting. Like I want to make it and then I want it to stay like that forever. Yeah. And so if it's just me in a space, like I am very like everything will go back in its yeah. place. Like I yeah. won't mess yeah. anything up, but I have two small children um, and a husband that leaves his clothes on the floor as much as they do. <laughs> Um, so and two cats two small and just, children just and one big kid. Yeah. And just like all kinds of stuff. So like our house is always chaotic and like we, living here, we like moved back into like my family farmhouse mm -hmm. and there's like a million doors and all kinds of stuff being tracked inside. So it's like never clean. Um, and I feel like my way to cope with that is like, and, and we've been doing a lot of renovations too. So like mm. my way of coping is just to like block out everything that's not how I want it and to like imagine what it will be instead yeah. of dealing with it as it is. So like, um, I kinda have this, that vibe. this is an embarrassing story, but like our, we have like a, like a glass storm door in front of our front door. And we had lived there for two years and had never been cleaned. And I never once noticed that it was dirty, actually. Like, I just, like, I just, like, blocked it out it's because I, I hate the front door. Like, I, the front door is, like, this, you this ugly it. front door yeah. and it's got peeling paint on it. I don't like it. We I bought a different, like, antique door to put there. And so every time I would see the door, I'm just like, why haven't we gotten someone to install this other door that we already yeah. have? Like, why does this look so bad? So it was just, like, I was just, like like X'd it out in my mind. It was not at all like a try to live with it as no, it is. I and understand. then my husband cleaned it one day and I was like, wow, this is so, <laughs> so clean. And he was like, yeah, I've been waiting on you to clean it. And I'm like, why you've been waiting on me yeah, to no clean kidding. it? Like, I'm not going to clean no it. No harm. <laughs> exactly. So, um, anyway, I, am, I, I definitely take the like organization, like making the house look beautiful realm in our relationship. And he yeah. takes more of the cleaning. Not but. that I don't ever clean anything, but, um, <laughs> as far as like my favorite cleaning supply goes, I definitely <laughs> do not have one. I don't mind like vacuuming. I like that better than like, oh, dusting. Oh, here we go. <laughs> dusting. <laughs> what is, what is so exciting about vacuuming? I Vacuums I are a black hole in your friggin financial area yeah in, in at least to me and my wife because you buy one and they ain't cheap you yeah. know you can drop 150 to 250 on a vacuum that does everything yeah, yeah. and it's the best vacuum for pets bs yeah. yeah i bought three vacuums in the last like probably four years because well, like the, i bought cheaper ones thinking so, like yeah. oh let's test it out and like they haven't worked they've fallen apart we're like we we went for a while with the ones that are like not like cordless and uh -huh. like the stick vacuums, yeah, yeah. but then they don't like stand up on their own. So the kids would try to use it and then it'd fall over and break. And like, we did finally switch to one that I do kind of like, but I can't remember. Well, I'm repping Dyson so because like, I bought with our, I seriously bought our first Dyson with gift cards from our wedding. Mm. So that was that long ago. And, um, bought that Dyson and it was wonderful and it just died. So that was 10 years ago yeah. and or 11 years ago. And it just died. Oh, like right before Thanksgiving, it just died. And I hum hawed back and forth whether I was going to buy another one or not. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I, I'm sticking with Dyson because I knew how to take it apart yeah, and clean it and put it back together. And that's what I liked about it. And so also I was something like, I would never do, but that would be true. Yeah, yeah no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I take it apart and clean it. And so I bought another one. And I, I like to vacuum, but I don't like to clean it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I know we used it for years. We had like a, I don't, I don't, not even like some fancy name brand, but it was just like a plug-in vacuum that had the bags in it. Yeah. And so Ugh. it was kind of annoying to buy the bags, but Ugh. then you just like, you just take the bag out and throw it away. That's true. Whereas the one we have now, we did go back to a cord, a cord, corded yeah. one, but you have to clean it out. And yeah. like, that's kind of annoying. Yeah. I, I just dump it and go. And then once a year I'll go and I'll like wash the vacuum cleaner. But that's what I like about it. So he was talking to him and Brooke were talking about needing a new vacuum cleaner. I'm like, well, I just told him my Dyson story. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get a text message from Brooke and she's like, we're literally never buying another vacuum cleaner ever again. Oh, is, it that, is it that amazing? <laughs> I think so. Well, I was working and I hear her yell from the other room. <laughs> I love this vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> I immediately grab my phone and text Stephanie. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe we should have we should have asked you guys like several years ago. For yeah, vacuum. they're expensive. I mean, I've heard great things. We yeah. were always trying to cheap out, and I feel like that didn't yeah. work out in our favor. That's one of those things um, that doesn't... because we've spent at this point we've spent more than we would have on a Dyson on a Dyson on, that on different was my other. Thinking. Yeah. I was like, listen, babe, 
we could go buy another $200, $250 vacuum yeah. that supposedly does all the stuff that we know it doesn't and do that every like year. Uh huh. Yeah. In the span of 10 years, like add that up. That's yeah. more than $500 yeah. on a vacuum. Yeah. So why don't we just, which we didn't pay that much, but. <laughs> yeah. So Dyson love this conversation. needs to come and sponsor us. Where are you at, Dyson? <laughs> Where <are> you at, Dyson? <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of glitter to clean up yeah, here. Yeah, we do. Hope you have a good vacuum. We have a lot. Yeah. You don't even have to pay us. We could just get a free you know, Yeah, a free vacuum cordless cleaner. one for Yeah. I'm waiting for Dyson to, to come out with one of those like cuz I I buy the Crosswave that's like it mops. Oh. You bougie. I oh god. Yeah, when it comes to like cleaning the floors because I'm like you. You have like five cats. I have five cats, and so oh, you do. And I, I, I wasn't even sure the number. I guessed it right. On yeah, the spot. you did. And Jay is not the person that's going to clean, so it has to be me, which is sad because I. Am, <laughs> it would be lovely to have someone clean. Yeah, um, we tried to like. So I tried to make it service, easy, easy. but it was high, it was hard to get people like that to show up. I yeah, feel like yeah. We had some not great experiences yeah. with that. Well, and also like it's just the two of us and five cats, so it's like we. Don't like <laughs> it's it's just, it's just the two of us. So it's like I don't know. It just doesn't feel like it's worth it to yeah, have that somebody was, that come. That was always us. If, if we it was kids, just like when we had little kids. Yeah. It was like if we had kids, it would be a different. Story, you got to start but, outsourcing stuff. Yeah, you just don't have yeah, the bandwidth yeah, yeah. to do yeah. it all. That I'm not judging anybody for something like that. But with it just being the two of us, like if the floor hasn't been vacuumed in a few days, it's like you know what you gonna have to deal with it because <laughs> I don't feel like doing it today. So we don't really necessarily worry about it that bad. But anyway. Anything that I can take that will make it easier. So I like the Bissell Crosswave. So anyway, I'm trying to, I, I really wish Dyson would come up with something that is similar to that where it also mops because I, I hate dragging out a freaking mop in a bucket. So anything oh, yeah, that I don't is do like, that. I, uh, <laughs> we used to use a steam mop, but no, I don't, any mopping that's ever been done, Drew's done. We, I used to use a steam mop and I didn't love it. Um, but then I got the Crosswave and it's wonderful, but it's kind of like dying. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not holding its value. So I'm waiting on Dyson to come up with one. <laughs> they I'm might, sure they and will. I just don't know about it. But anyway, okay, sorry. That now we're repping, we're repping cleaning products now. Long combo about Dyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we can talk about anything, y'all. I really want to try the Dyson air wrap hair thingy. Oh, I've heard good things. Oh yeah. But I'm uh, that is where I will That's spend I will spend five hundred dollars on a on a vacuum cleaner, but I will not spend five hundred, six hundred dollars on a hair device. Curler. Yeah. No, no, I'm not doing that. Me neither. <laughs> if you do, that is wonderful. I'm not, I'm not bougie like that. I, I am, like I got two kids. I don't have the time to do my hair. Yeah, I am not bougie. I am bougie in a lot of ways, and that is just not the way that I am bougie. So anyway. Well, okay. if you ever decide to get one, you know it's going to last. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll, come, we'll come back on and we'll do an yeah. episode of like doing Stephanie's hair. Here's how it works, y'all. We're doing Sean's <laughs> hair. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, okay. Is that it? I mean, we're talking about vacuums. Yeah, yeah. We yeah went I think we're talking it up. about creative business owners <laughs> to our favorite vacuum cleaner, which I just think shows our age. Really, I know that was actually the first thing I thought when you guys were like, "Me and my wife were talking about this." And I was like, "How long have you guys been married?" And this is like a perfect example of yeah. like long term relationships. Yeah. Like, this is what we talk about. Yeah. I mean, it, it's I real mean, life. When though. we first yeah. went to buy a vacuum together, mm -hmm. it was literally like a fifty minute process, standing in one aisle. Yeah. Just looking at them, reading them, yeah, looking on reviews, uh -huh. and it's just like, I don't know. Uh huh. Yeah. Do you like that color? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's how I would make a decision. Like, ooh, I like the color of that yeah. one. Yeah. Well, that's how I immediately am drawn to stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. Art, artists, yeah. Yeah. We're Packaging artists, and colors. Yeah. Like, I can't stand if I find something on Amazon that I need, <clears throat> and they have one that, like, looks so freaking cool <laughs> but it has like horrible reviews yeah. and everyone's like don't waste your money and then the other one looks like a stupid piece of crap but it's like this Amazing. is the awesomest thing and it's like yeah no. or i hate when like you find something that you want and it's like the same product like so it has good reviews but there's like two options and one looks nicer it's yeah. the better color and one doesn't but the one that looks nicer the better color is like twice as expensive or something and then <laughs> it's like time. this eternal debate of like every time mm, yeah. how much do i care about aesthetics <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a lot in this case or yeah. not a lot yeah it only matters for shopping yeah just to get your eye mm -hmm. yeah but it works yeah yeah also, okay i'm weird all right yeah 
dun, 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 dun. No. Well, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, yeah. everybody. To us, if ramble. you're still here, good lord, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, message us, subscribe, like, do all the stuff you know. Okay. Well, thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.